One thing I think most people know about me if they watch my channel regularly is that I am a big proponent of lead-free ammo. And because of this, a lot of people ask me all the time, what lead-free ammos do you recommend that perform as well in a self-defense capacity as ammos that contain lead? So I thought today I would make a little list here of what I think to be the top five lead-free self-defense ammos. Now, before we get into the recommended ammos in the lead-free category, we have to set a baseline here. We have to create a little scale by which we judge the lead-free ammo. And we're going to use two leaded ammos to make this scale. We're going to use Hornady Critical Defense, the 115 grain 9 millimeters on one end. And on the other end, we're going to use Buffalo Bore 115 grain 9 millimeter plus P plus jacketed hollow points. This creates a scale of what I think are acceptable 9mm performance. And I'm using 9mm as an example here because it'd be hard to cover all different types of ammo, different calibers of ammo. So we're just going to use 9mm as a baseline to compare different manufacturers. Now, like I said, this is a scale here we're going to judge the non-lead ammos by. Now on the Hornady end of the scale, that 115 grain projectile is being pushed at about 1,140 feet per second, creating about 332 foot-pounds of energy at the muzzle. Now on the other end, the Buffalo Bore has that 115 grain projectile moving at about 1,390 feet per second, producing about 485 foot-pounds of energy at the muzzle. Now keep in mind, this scale isn't a scale of weak to hot. This scale is a scale of hot to really, really hot. So let's see where all the lead-free ammos fall on this scale. Now, before I get into the actual top five recommended ammos here, I want to mention a couple of things. First, I want to say Buffalo Bore will not be on my list. Even though Buffalo Bore does make a lead-free ammo in a 115 grain projectile, they do make it in a plus P plus loading. I have had problems with Buffalo Bore's plus P plus loadings in the past. I don't trust them. Therefore, I'm not going to put them on this list. I also want to give an honorable mention to one ammo and tell you why one other ammo is going to be excluded. Now, the honorable mention is going to go to Civil Defense. Civil Defense makes a 50 grain lead-free projectile. It's a regular hollow point design. Now, this is a very light bullet, but it is scorching. It's moving at 2,000 feet per second. Now, where does that put that on the power scale? That puts it at about 444 foot-pounds at the muzzle on the power scale, which is easily acceptable. It's a really powerful load. But since it is such a light load, a lot of people have a problem with it. It's kind of a niche market. And also, a lot of guns have trouble with bullets that are under like 90 grains or 100 grains. So I'm not going to recommend this bullet simply because it is such a light load. Some guns might have problems with it, and some people might have problems with it also. Now, the round that I want to mention here that I still think is a very good ammo, but just didn't make the list, is the Barnes TAC PDX ammo. In the 9mm plus P loading, Barnes loads a 115 grain bullet, and it's a traditional hollow point bullet, a lead-free hollow point bullet, but it only moves that bullet at about 1,125 feet per second. Now, where does this put Barnes on the power chart? Well, it doesn't even make the chart here. It has a little less performance than Hornady ammo, coming in at about 323 foot-pounds at the barrel. And since it didn't quite break into what the leaded ammos do, even though I think it's a great round, I'm not going to include it because I want all the recommended rounds to be able to do at least as well as the leaded ammos. All right, let's get into the list here with number five. At number five is Fort Scott. Now, the Fort Scott bullet design is a solid copper bullet. It is not a hollow point, and it's designed a little special. It's designed to where it tumbles upon impact to create a larger wound cavity, and boy, it does leave a good wound cavity. I've seen some, a lot of testing on this ammo, and it does amazing in gel, and it does really good in hard barrier penetration, even penetrating doors that have the windows rolled down. Now, the 80 grain Fort Scott 9mm, this isn't plus P, this is just a regular 9mm loading, is going to move at about 1,356 feet per second. Now, where does that put it on the power scale? Now, Fort Scott doesn't actually release energy information, but based on some tests I've seen from other YouTubers and from other ballistics people, the Fort Scott ammo comes in at about 410 foot-pounds at the barrel, which puts it into 
the acceptable level on this range easily because it puts it pretty much right in the middle. Maybe a little bit above the middle, but pretty much right in the middle. So the Fort Scott is kind of a unique design. Like I say, it tumbles upon impact. It really performs very well as far as uh, velocity and mass and energy. So this ground is definitely at number five. Now coming in at number four is an ammo from Underwood. It is their Extreme Defender Series. It is their nine millimeter plus P plus round using a 90 grain bullet. This is also a solid copper bullet. It is not a hollow point, but it has a specially designed tip to help it penetrate better and leave a better wound cavity. Now this round is pretty much scorching at 1,550 feet per second. And even though it's only a 90 grain bullet, where does that translate on the power scale? Well, it comes in at 480 foot pounds at the muzzle. That's pretty much the equal of the leaded Buffalo bore ammo. Even though this is a lighter ammo, it's under 100 grains, it's loaded hot enough that guns really don't have that problem that they have with some really light ammos. So I have no problem recommending this ammo. It is a excellent performing round. It leaves a great wound cavity and therefore it's number four on my list. If it was a little bit heavier bullet, it'd be higher on the list, but because it's just under 100 grains, I'm gonna give it the number four position. Now at number three on the list is one of my all-time favorite rounds. It is Corbon DPX. Now the loading we're looking at here from Corbon is also 115 grain, nine millimeter plus P round. And it moves at about 1,250 feet per second at the barrel. Now where does that translate to on the power scale here? That comes to just under 400 foot-pounds at the muzzle. It's about 395 foot-pounds at the muzzle. So it's a very acceptable round for self-defense. This round is awesome. I mean, you can't go wrong with Corbon. And this round, this lead-free 9mm hollow point is no exception. It definitely deserves to be at least number three on the list. Okay, at number two on the list is a powerhouse of a round. It is the Underwood Ammo Extreme Penetrator Plus P plus nine millimeter in 115 grain. Now, even though this is a 115 grain bullet, it's moving really fast. It's 1,350 feet per second at the barrel. So let's see where that translates as far as power on our scale. This one comes in way up there at 465 foot pounds at the muzzle. That is impressive. That's almost equal to the Buffalo Bore plus P plus round, which I don't really recommend Buffalo Bore, but like I said, this is right up there with it. So this is, you're not gonna see any real difference between the performance of that really heavy, really hot lead ammo from Buffalo Bore and this lead free ammo from Underwood. That's why it's number two on the list. All right, number one on the list, you might ask, what is number one? Well, number one is also from Underwood, and it is also an extreme penetrator in 115 grains, but it is just the nine millimeter plus P. The nine millimeter plus P doesn't move quite as fast as the plus P plus, but it's still moving at 1,250 feet per second. Now, when you look over here at the power scale, it does come in quite a bit lower than the plus P plus version of this round. It comes in at about 400 foot pounds at the muzzle. And that's still very acceptable. It's right in the middle of this hot to super hot scale, but you might say, well, why did you choose this one over the hotter plus P plus? Well, for one main reason, and that is it is not plus P plus. It is just plus P. It is softer shooting than the plus P plus, so it's easier to control. It still performs very well at 400 foot pounds. And since it's not plus P plus, you're not voiding the warranty in guns and you're not adding extra wear to your guns. So that's why this round is number one on my list of recommended lead free ammos. So there you have it. There's my list of top five lead-free ammos that you can buy right off the shelf and how they compare to off-the-shelf leaded ammos that a lot of people use now for self-defense. I think you can see you can get lead-free ammo that works just as well as leaded ammo. And you know, in the end, it's really not much more expensive than high-quality regular lead ammo. So you're not going to spend a lot more money. You're going to get just as good a performance and it's better for the environment. It keeps those environmentalists off our back, whether they're right or they're wrong. It just mutes their argument 100% and we still get good performance. So those are the rounds that I recommend you use if you want to use lead-free ammo.